Hey people, it is Tuesday, June the 15th, and it is 11.48 in the morning. And I'm here at the corner of Coxwell Avenue and O'Connor Drive. <laughs> just had to make sure it was drive and not street. <laughs> and I just recently learned that this far northern end of Coxwell Avenue has this neat little commercial strip that I was completely unaware of. I had, I had no idea this was here. I knew uh, Coxwell Avenue has a bit of a commercial strip down at the southern end near Gerard Street. And I thought that was the only section of Coxwell that had a commercial strip. But apparently I was mistaken. And not only does this have a commercial strip, but it's kind of almost like a throwback to some sort of like small town main street. It has angled parking along the street, which is a rarity in Toronto. I think the last time I came across a stretch of street like this with angled parking was when I did Donlands Avenue, which has also a similar commercial strip at its northern end, which is just a little ways west of here. And there's a Mr. Sub. That's also a rarity. But this seems to be mostly made up of just locally owned businesses very much has the sort of vibe of just like a small town main street it's totally cool it's awesome that there are areas like this in Toronto that I could be I could be unaware of for years really An old school convenience store There's the Coxwell bus. I rode that from Coxwell subway station to get up here. And as you can see, it's a beautiful day. It's, I think, around 20 degrees or so. And sunny, very sunny. I think the angled parking is what makes this seem very much like a small town. Or like something you'd see out west in some western Canadian towns, really. More so than small towns in Ontario. Just a little bird making his presence known. And there's a pigeon and another pigeon making a home of this broken sign. <laughs> So we are in the former borough of East York right now. And this part of East York is generally called Old East York. It kind of differentiates from the newer part of East York on the other side of the of the Don Valley, which is more suburban in nature, and that's where you find neighborhoods such as Thorncliff Park.
<laughs> Knuckle Sandwich. That's a good name for a restaurant. But as you can see, we do have one chain store interloper here. This one has managed to stay open when so many locations across the city have closed down. It's probably one of the only Starbucks locations in this section of the city. So I'm glad I came up here. I would never have known about this neighborhood if it wasn't for a thread on Reddit that I came across where people were asked to post a picture or a link to a part of Toronto that doesn't look like Toronto and someone posted a link to this stretch of Coxwell saying that it looked like some sort of small town which it really does So I'll just continue walking south here along Coxwell. It does become a mostly residential street all the way down to around Girard, where it picks up again as a commercial stretch. And that's also where Little India begins. Up ahead is Michael Guerin Hospital. So that big building kind of jutting out there. So rather than walk all the way down Coxwell to the Danforth, I think I'll turn right up ahead here at Cosburn. And that will take us into Pape Village, which is another commercial stretch along Pape Avenue. I think that would make for a more interesting walk than along this residential part of Coxwell. East York Deli. All right, so we'll turn right here on Cosburn Avenue. Now we're heading west. And look at these houses here on Lankin Boulevard. These are some seriously solid big old houses. And on the other side of the street, we have more typical East York post war bungalows.
this area of old East York was built up kind of spanning a bit of the pre-war and immediate post-war era. You'll find housing styles from both sides of the war, pre and post. Cosburn Middle School. And here we have a better look at what is a very typical style of housing throughout much of East York. If you go south down closer to Danforth Avenue, there you'll find the more pre-war housing styles. And it looks like I've just come across another little block of commercial buildings. Paul Spaghetti. Hmm. East York Montessori School. By the looks of it, these commercial blocks seem to have been built up, I'd say, in the immediate post-war era, maybe in the early 1950s, or late 1940s. East York Soccer Club. And another, another deli, Balkan Foods. And this stretch has a really old school look to it. More so than the strip on Coxwell that I started the video at. Wow, right straight ahead, you can see one of the Leaside Towers. That's in the Thorncliffe Park section of East York. I did a walking tour through Thorncliffe Park some time ago. 
And way off in the distance you can see the CN Tower. Glistening in the sun. I was not expecting to see that. It's really hard to find a part of the city where you can't see the CN Tower. Here's another look at the Lisai Towers. Those are the tallest buildings in East York. I think they're around 44 stories. Made up of two twin towers. And they date from the early 1970s. They're a good 50 years old. Leaside itself is a neighborhood within the former borough, borough of East York, and it was also a, a, a town at one time before that. And the main retail shopping strip in the former town of Leaside is along Bayview Avenue. All right, now we've reached Greenwood Avenue. You can take this south all the way down into Leslieville. That's at Queen Street. We have more typical East York bungalows. As you can see, some of these smaller houses get knocked down and replaced with behemoths such as that. I think I actually kind of prefer the look of these bungalows over the newer replacements.
Some of these are really cute actually. Hmm. This one is basically saying, hey, tear me down and replace me with something modern. We're at Donlins Avenue. That other small commercial strip with the angled parking is just just a little ways north of here. And I mentioned in the video I did of that area that it's also where John Candy grew up. And his former home is there in the neighborhood. As well as the movie theater, the former movie theater that he used to go to as a child to kind of inspire him to get into show business. Yeah, you can sort of see the strip up ahead there. Sorry, if you're interested in that, check out my Donlins Avenue video. So we'll continue west along Cosburn. It starts to transition into a more of a, an apartment district as we get closer to Pape Avenue. I think these buildings were constructed mostly in the 1960s, maybe some from the late 1950s. There's lots of good deals to be had in some of these buildings, but uh, they don't always have the best of reputations. Mostly in terms of things like maintenance and pests. This one builds itself as luxury renovated suites. 
don't know how luxurious they are. <laughs> they don't come across as luxurious from the outside, but hey, who knows? This street is actually fairly similar to a street in Parkdale called Jameson Avenue. It's a similar style of apartment buildings dating from the same time period. The Concord. It's a cool name for an apartment building. And then just up ahead is Pape Avenue and Pape Village. Looks like this McDonald's is getting a, a whole new look. I'm not sure if they completely tore down the original building or if they just are kind of renovating it. Just 
head north just for a block or so, then I'll cross the other side of the street and head down south through Pape Village. Just want to start where, it's, where the commercial stretch begins, so we get the full length of it. Here's another dollar store that I've never heard of before. <laughs> I don't know if that's a chain or not. It's the only one I've ever seen. I believe there was a proposal for this lot for a mid-rise condominium. Condos have not really made their way into this neighborhood. Maybe a few of those old apartment buildings have been converted to condos, but for the most part, all those buildings are rental buildings. south through Pape Village. This is the most substantial commercial strip in Old East York. The retail strip on Bayview Avenue in Leaside is technically East York, but It's generally regarded as being its own thing, with its own name, being Leaside. But it is also a fairly substantial commercial strip. Yes, the pot shops have made their way here to Pape Village, as they've made their way to every neighborhood in the city.
say hello, man. Hey, how, you how you doing? Good? Good. Why are you filming us? You don't know if that's illegal, right? It's not, actually. It's actually not illegal. It's probably one of the biggest misconceptions ever regarding outdoor recording. This stretch of storage here looks a little worse for wear. There's an old school Trans Am. I never was a big car guy, but when I was a kid, that was my favorite car. I think it was spurred by the Smokey and the Bandit movies. That thing looks brand new. If you ever want to know which is the number one Chinese restaurant in the city, here you go. Now you know. Come to Pape Village. Also the home to goat coffee.
Well, the commercial strip kind of dies off right past here. Becomes a bit more haphazard in nature. More gappy. I bet you that place is good. It just has the look of an old school, authentic, good Italian place. So I think I will wrap up this video now that we're on the more boring part of Pape Avenue. Just mainly residential down to the Danforth. So I hope you enjoyed. If so, leave a comment below. Let me know your thoughts on Toronto's unexpected little commercial strips such as the one on Coxwell Avenue. And like and share and of course subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And make sure you hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of my videos. And if you'd like to support the channel there are links in the description where you can do so via PayPal and also through my new merch store. And you can find me on Instagram also under K Continuum. So thanks for watching. And be sure to keep checking back because, as always, I will continue.